Reverend Dr. Abraham Valiega. Maraming salamat, uh, Brother J.R. At si Brother J.R. din po ay merong gawain na bago rin nating binuksan doon po sa Sitio Bacal, ito po ay sa bagong silangan. Nalangin po ninyo na mabili natin ang property, meron po ibinibenta ro na 200 square meters. Sa akin pong pag-aaral ay nasihan po ako na natapos na natin ang aklat po ng Philippians. At uh, uh, nakita ko po ang pagkakasunod-sunod ng mga epistles po. Ito po ay mga prison epistles. Sinulat po ito ni Pablo habang siya po ay nakakulong doon sa praetorium ng, ng uh, Rome. At uh, dahil po sa patotoo nitong si Apostol Pablo ay marami pong mga sundalo na dati po ay kaaway ng Ibanghelyo pero sila po ay naging mana ng palataya. Subalit kung misang po ay meron mga katanungan tayo, yung simple po ba na bakit alam natin na tayo ay ligtas? At bakit alam natin na nasa atin ang buhay na walang hanggan? Kaya po ngayong umaga ay minarapat ko po, nasundan po itong aklat ng uh, Pilipos, ating pag-aralan po itong susunod na chapter, at ito po ay Colossians. So, atin pong babasahin, please be with me and join me as we read together. Maari pong isang chapter ito, pero kung isang po naman ay uh, wala naman tayong ginagawa. Pero napakaganda po na bumasa upang may paunawa ko sa inyo sa magitan po ng ating pag-aaral, ang katotohanan po, ang mga mahalagang katotohanan na nararapat makuha at ma Uh, mapa sa mga mananampalataya. Inyo pong sundan ako, babasahin ko po ang verse 1, kayo po ang verse 2, at ganito ang sabi po sa Colossians chapter 1, verse 1. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the will of God, and Timotheus, our brother. Kayo po. We give thanks to God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, praying always for you. For the hope which is laid up for you in heaven, whereof you ye heard before in the word of truth of the gospel. As he also learned of Epaphras, our dear fellow servant, who is for you a faithful minister of Christ. For this cause we also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you and to desire that ye might be filled with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. Strengthened with all might, according to his glorious power, and to all patience and long suffering with joyfulness. Amen. Who hath delivered us from the power of darkness, and hath translated us into the kingdom of his dear Son. who is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature. And he is before all things, and by him all things consist.
for it pleased the Father that in Him should all fullness dwell. And you that were sometime alienated and enemies in your mind by wicked works, yet now hath reconciled, hath he reconciled. If you continue in the faith, grounded and settled, and be not moved away from the hope of the gospel, which ye have heard, and and which was preached to every creature which is under heaven, whereof I, Paul, am made a minister. Whereof I am made a minister, according to the dispensation of God which is given to me for you, to fulfill the word of God. To whom God would make known what is the riches of the glory <coughs> of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. Sabay-sabay po nating basahin ang verse 29. Whereunto I also labor, striving according to his workings, which worketh in me mightily. Manalangin po tayo. Amang banal, salamat po sa inyong salita. Papagliwanagin po ninyo ito sa amin at makita po namin ang kagandahan ng inyong salita sa aming buhay. Salamat po sapagat ng aming mapakinggan ang salita ng katotohanan. Kayo po ang siya nagbigay sa amin ng liwanag upang tanggapin namin, lalong-lalo na ang katotohanan na si Kristo po ang siyang tagapagligtas at tanging siya po ang nararapat naming tanggapin sa aming buhay. Salamat po sa buhay na walang hanggan. Salamat po sa pagpapatawad at salamat po sa napakaraming mga bagay na aming nakita mula po sa inyong sinulat. At aming pong dalangin ang inyong pagpapala sa aming pag-aaral sa pala, pangalan ni Jesus. Amen. Maraming po salamat. Makakaupo na po kayo. Kinuha ko po, kaya ako'y lumabas, kinuha ko po yung Tagalog na Biblia. Sapagat ang atin pong bibigyan ng puna at pansin ay ito pong binabanggit po sa verse 27. Ito po ay Tagalog ng lubos na maunawaan po ng bawat isa. Ang wika po rito sa Tagalog Bible, na sa kanila'y minagaling ng Diyos na ipakilala kung ano ang mga kayamanan ng kalwalatian ng hiwagang ito na uh, sa gitna ng mga hintil. So meron po palang kayamanan ang mga mananampalataya. At ang sabi po sa huling bahagi, na ito'y si Kristo na nasa inyo. Kaya po lahat ng tumanggap sa Panginoon, si Kristo ay nasa atin. Yung po, hindi lamang dito sa isip. Kung tunay kang tumanggap sa Panginoon Yesu Kristo, ang Panginoon Yesu Kristo ay nabubuhay sa iyong buhay at sa iyong puso. Nang wika pa rito, napag-asa ninyo sa kalwalatian. Wow! Christ in you, the hope of glory. Ito po hindi maunawa na isang unbeliever. May pag-asa ba siya? Pag say na matay, may katiyakan ba na say papasok sa kalangitan at siya ay mapapatawad sa kasalanan at siya ay magkakaroon ng buhay na walang hanggan? Ito po yung aral na ating pinangahawakan. Ito ang kadahilanan kung bakit tayo ay naniniwala sa tinatawag pong eternal security. Amen? Si Kristo ay nasa atin. Alang tanong po ngayong umaga na ito, si Kristo ba ay nasa iyong buhay? Kung wala po si Kristo, hindi mo makiklaim ang eternal life. You are not a genuine Christian. A genuine Christian has Christ in his life. Not religion. Not good works. No, never. 
It is Christ in us. Christ in you, the hope of glory. The text is part of a great argument. The words describe the central of three mysteries. Na meron pong tatlong misteryo na binanggit ito si Pablo. Which yet are not three but one. By the way of introduction, let us notice the relations of those words to the context. To the context. The apostle in this epistle deals preeminently with the glories of Christ. Yung pong kalawalatian ni Kristo. And with these, us at the disposal of the church. Kaya po, ang ground and pillar and the one that holds the truth is the church. Yung po ang kadahilanan mga minamahal, kaya nga, napakahirap po sa isang tunay na anak ng Diyos na hindi faithful nakikinig na salita na, ng Panginoon at hindi dumadalo upang siya'y maturuan ng kaalaman mula sa salita ng Panginoon. Tama po ba? Some of you have remained grade one. Or maybe, kayo po ay preschooler lang sa katotohanan. Bakit? Kulang na kulang ay inyong katapatan sa pag-aaral ng salita ng Diyos. Datapat kung kayo ay dadalo at kayo makikinig, maunawaan ninyo ang ating doktrina, ang ating katuruan, lalo na ang katiyakan ng kaligtasan. Amen? The apostle in this epistle deals preeminently with the glories of Christ and with this as the disposal of the church. The principal declarations of the epistles are firstly, sabi nga po, it pleased the Father that in Him should all fullness dwell. Kaya nga po ang lahat ng tinatawag na rurok ng tinatawag na pagkaalam sa tunay na Diyos ay na kay Kristo. Kung wala kang pagkaalam kay Kristo, hindi mo maalaman ang tinatawag na misteryo ng kaligtasan. Si Kristo po susi. Kaya tanungin mo isang tao, ligtas ka na ba? Hindi na alam makaligtasan. Bakit? Ang kaligtasan ay na kay Kristo. At kung wala ka kay Kristo, hindi mo maunawan ang katiyakan ng kaligtasan. Maliwanag po ba? In the paragraph in which the text occurs, the apostle uses the word misery three times. In verse 24, he says, I rejoice in my sufferings for your sake. Nakulong nga po siya eh, dahil sa kanyang pangaral. And fill up on my part that which is lacking of the afflictions of Christ in my flesh for His body's sake, which is the church. Kaya nga po, ang book of Ephesians exposes the body. But in the book of Colossians, what this book reveals is the head. And that is the Lord Jesus Christ. Kaya napakalaga po na ating maunuman. We are the body, but the head is Christ. Now, is Christ dwelling in you? Nasa atin ba si Kristo? Kung tayo nagsasabing kristyano, namamahala ba? Sabagat yung po ang purpose ng head. Nagbibigay ng purpose, nagbibigay ng goal, nagbibigay ng tinatawag na direksyon sa ating buhay. Is Christ directing us in our Christian life? Many times we reject Christ being preeminent in our life. Nire-reject po natin ang pangunguna ng ating Panginoon sa ating buhay. And we follow our will. But listen to this. We will never be successful and we will never be able to say no to sin when Christ is not dominating our life. Okay. Let's continue. So verse 25 this verse, which is to argument, is the parenthesis. And we read in verse 26, Even the mystery which hath been hid from ages and generations. Yung pong misteryo na ito ay hindi po nakita ng Old Testament. But the Apostle Paul was given a revelation. Siya po kaya siya nakasulat nito, naging maliwanag sa kanya bilang isang pariseyo, at bilang nakakaunawa ng tinatawag na kautusan, na yun po ang pinakang batayan na mga Hudyo sa kanilang kaligtasan. But listen to this, ang kautusan na hindi magliligtas. The law will only 
show you that you are a sinner, but the law itself cannot save anybody. But it will point you to Christ because you are not perfect and you see that you need someone who will save you from sin. Yung po ang layunin ng kautosan. Upang ituro tayo na si Kristo ang magiging handog at alay para sa ating kasalanan. At ito'y nakita ni John the Baptist when he even said, Behold the Lamb of God which taken away the sin of the world. Culturally, you will find that the Jews are so familiar with offerings. But all their offerings are nothing. Because you cannot base your salvation on the offerings. It must be in the person of Christ. All these things that were done in the Old Testament are just pattern. All the rituals that they were doing are just pointing to the real person. And that is the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen? God was pleased to make known what is the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you. Kaya ito po yung tinatawag na misteryo. Hindi tinitingnan ko ikay Hudyo, hindi tinitingnan ko ikay Grego, hindi tinitingnan kung sino ka ba man. If you will just admit that you're a sinner, if you will just admit And by faith, you will put your trust in Christ alone. Amen? Kaya sabi po rito, Christ in you. Is Christ really in you? Yan po magandang katanungan. Totoo ba na si Kristo na sinasabi natin, tinanggap ko si Kristo? But what is the manifestation? How do you know that there is genuine faith in you and in us? Nagsasabi tayo na nampalataya, pero hiwalay sa katotohanan ng ating buhay mga kapatid ay hindi nagre-reflect at hindi nagpapakita ng tunay na pananampalatay sa ating Panginoon. Amen? You ask yourselves, tunay bang nabago ka na? Bakit hindi nababago? Sabagat si Kristo'y nasa ulo lang, wala sa puso at wala sa buhay. Ang tunay na binago ng Panginoon at tunay na tumagap kay Kristo at tunay na nagtiwala sa Panginoon sa Kristo, siya'y mababago. Amen. Hindi sa magitan ng kakayahan natin, kundi sa magitan ng biyaya ng Panginoon. Amen. And so the first, the church is the mystery hid from generations, from ages. Yun po yung unang misteryo. Second, this mystery, Christ in you, the hope of glory. Yun po yung pangalawa. Finally, the mystery of God, even Christ. The word mystery has a uniform sense in the New Testament. And that sense has been most lucidly expressed by Dr. Hanley Moore. A mystery is a truth undiscoverable except by revelation. Kaya po yung katotohanan na ito, hindi ito madidiskubre. It has to be revealed by God. Kaya nga po, in the end, atin na pag-aralan, the book of Revelation was revealed. The unveiling of the truth about the second coming of Christ. The unveiling of the truth about the future. Kung hindi po ipinasulat ng Diyos yung book of Revelation, hindi natin maunawaan ang darating na kapanahonan. Amen? At hindi rin maunawa po yun ng mga Kristiyano sabagat walang interest na talagang pag-aralan at halukayin at saliksikin at investigayin kung totoo ba na merong ang second coming. Yan ang nakakalungkot. Kung ikaw tunay na anak ng Diyos, magsasaliksi ka ng salita ng Panginoon. Amen? You will not read it just for reading. You will read it to search it kaya sabi nga ng Panginoon sa Kristo, search the scriptures for in them you think you have eternal life. And there are they which testify of me. Maraming Kristiyano pero hindi kilala si Kristo. Nagsasabing Kristiyano pero hindi lubos na nakikilala ang Panginoon. When we say we are saved, when we say that we were born sometime, pati date na babanggit nga natin, 
Is it immaterial to say that? No. Sabagat sabi nga do sa John chapter 8, ye shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. Amen? Kayo po hindi pag-aalam ng kaligtasan, if you are here today and you are not sure of your salvation, listen, you are not even saved. You may profess that you are a Christian. You may even say that you uh, were born into a Christian family, even uh, in a family of a pastor or workers. Pero mga kapatid, wala pong kabuluhan. Ikay pinanganak sa pamilya na pastor. Ikay pinanganak sa mga matatanda ng kristyano. Kung hindi mo naunawa ng pagiging tunay na anak ng Diyos. At yung po ang nakakalungkot. Bilang inyong senior pastor, at ako po'y nagtuturo ng ganito, nais ko po na mahagip ninyo ang katotohanan na yan. Nais ko po makita ninyo ang katotohanan na ito. Sabagat, kung hindi natin ito lubos ang pag-aaralan, sabi nga, a mystery, a mystery is a thing only to be known when revealed. Misteryo po ng kaligtasan. At inire-reveal po yan ng kasulatan. Kaya very clear po, ang unang step nga po, first, you have to realize that you're a sinner. Tama po ba? All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Number two truth, that Jesus Christ died for us. Romans 5.8, the Bible tells us that God commended His love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, somebody died for us, and that is Christ. Christ died for us. Romans chapter 10, verse 23, the wages of sin is death. Yes, this is the reason why day after day, minute after minute, seconds after second, we find people are dying. Why? It is because of sin. It is appointed unto man once to die, and after that is judgment. Once you die without Christ, you have no more hope. But listen, Christ in you, the hope of glory. Kung tunay nating tinanggap, merong kalwalatian. At ang kalwalatian na yan, sabi nga doon sa, uh, dito, inyong tinan sa verse 5, dahil sa pag-asa na natataan para sa inyo sa langit. Can you imagine that? Ito pong pag-asa na ito ay magbibigay sa atin ng katiyakan hanggang tayo makarating sa langit. Amen? Basahin niyo pa ulit-ulit. And I hope and pray, this will give you the courage. This will give you the encouragement. This will give you excitement that you are now a child of God. Kaya alam po ninyo, maraming kristyano, kukuti-kuti tapang ka ng Christian life. Parang walang pag-asa. Pero nara- nararapat na dapat may sigla tayo. Amen ba mga kapatid? Dapat may sigla tayo. Why? Because we are a saint. Banal. Binanal ng Diyos. Nilinisan ng Diyos. Isineparate ng Diyos. Amen? At dahil dito, tayo papatungo sa langit. Amen? Kaya dito po sa bahag nito, in that definition of the used word mystery in the New Testament, be accepted, the apostle speaks of the church as hidden in the past ages and never discovered until revealed. Kaya nga po, nang dumating si Kristo, it was Jesus Christ who revealed when he said, nang kanya pong sinabi kay Peter, Peter, you have identified me as the living Christ, ang buhay na Kristo. Pero sabi ni, ng Panginoon sa Kristo, Thou art Peter, and upon this rock, he was referring to himself as the rock. Listen, Peter is never the rock, it is Christ! Kaya sabi ng Panginoon, upon this rock, I will build my church. So it was the Lord Jesus Christ who revealed the entity of a church, the institution of a church. Wala pong nag, uh, nagturo at wala pong nakapagturo ng Old Testament patungkol po sa church. It was only the Lord Jesus Christ. 
Kaya nga po ang founder ng church, never, na kung sino man po mga tao dito sa lupa, it's only the Lord Jesus Christ. And mind you, you should be thankful that you belong to the church. Pinag-u- pinag-uusapan po namin mga pastor, ano bang authority ng pagkakaroon ng church? Pasalamat po tayo na naunawaan natin ang patungkol sa church na si Kristo ang nagtatag niyan. Pero ang pinakang ugat po niyan, ang pinakang root na ating nakita, John 1.6, There was a man sent from God whose name was John. Never in the Old Testament and never uh, in the silent years were there a man who was sent from God. And why was John the Baptist sent? It's because John the Baptist was the forerunner of the Lord Jesus Christ, and he announces the person that will start the church. He announces the one who will save. Yung po trabaho ni John the Baptist. That's why when he started his ministry, he did not start in the city, he started in the barrio. Kung saan po yung mga tao ay uh, kukunti, at sumisigaw siya doon sa ilang. At ang kanyang message, the very message of John the Baptist is the same message of Jesus Christ and the message of the apostles. At ano po yung message niya? Repent ye, for the kingdom of God is at hand. Ang ibig sabihin po, tanging sa magita ng pagsisisi, o ibig sabihin, makilala mo at tanggapin mo na ikay makasalanan at kung magsisisi ka at mananampalataya ka sa Panginoon, doon ka iniligtas ng Panginoon. Amen? Kaya sinabihan po niya, religious people, oh. Kayo nandi dito. O oh, kayo mga sundalo, ba't kayo nandi dito? Magkasya kayo sa inyong sweldo. Ibig sabihin, huwag mang gipit. Huwag mang ikil. Ang sabi niya doon sa mga uh, pariseyo at saduseyo, oh, ito yung mga tao na nagbabanal-banalan. Pero kung nakalang maging tunay ang inyong pagsisisi. Nicodemus came to Jesus Christ one day. And Jesus was plain and straight to him. At ang sabi ng Panginoon Iso Kristo kay Nicodemus, who was one of the Pharisee, who was one of the Sanhedrin, he said to him, you must be born again. Mga kapatid, kahit anong ginagawa mo sa relihiyon mo, hindi yan magliligtas. at niliwanag ng Panginoon, ibig sabihin ng pagiging born again. John 1.12 But as many as received Him, to them gave Him the power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on His name. Kaya po ang kaligtasan, it does not require any good works. Are you with me now? It requires genuine faith. Amen? Genuine faith. You have to trust Jesus Christ because by the faith of Jesus Christ, He offered Himself and became obedient even the death of the cross. Pinanam, pinanampalatayan niya, tiniwalaan niya ang Ama na sa magitan ng kanyang kamatayan, lahat ng tao na mananampalatayan sa Kanya ay magtatamo ng buhay na walang hanggan. Amen ba? Kaya po, simple lamang pananampalataya ito. You are not required to do a lot of things. You are not even allowed to pay anything for your salvation. Salvation is free. Amen? Naku, ikaw yung magpapakumbaba at tatawag lamang na may pagsisisi. Ikaw ay pagkakaloba ng Panginoon ng buhay na walang hanggan. Kaya sabi nga po rito, tingnan ninyo, Verse 13, Who hath delivered us from the power of darkness and hath translated us into the kingdom of His dear Son. Kaya ang lahat pong nanampalataya, mga kapatid, pamula sa kingdom ng Jablo, inilipat tayo sa kingdom ng anak ng Diyos. Amen? He has delivered us from the power of darkness. Sa verse 12, giving thanks unto the Father which hath made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance 
of the saints in light. Kaya po yung mga banal, hindi po tao gumagawa na para maging banal yung isang tao. It's not the church. Contrary to the belief that school of cardinals will, will proclaim a saint. At yung Pilipino po, tuwan-tuwa, nung magkaroon po tayo ng San Lorenzo, nung tayo magkaroon ng uh, si Caluno, uh, Calunsod. Ah, pero mga kapatid, school of cardinals ang nag-declare niyan. Pero ang nagdi-declare ng isang tao ay saint, ay walang iba kundi ang Diyos. Amen? Kaya pasalamat po tayo sa mga bagay na yan. He then passes behind the mystery of the church and comes to the words of my text, Christ in you, the hope of glory. The church consists of souls in whom Christ has had a personal advent and in whom He lives. Kaya po, Christ in you, nananahanan po sa atin ng Panginoon. Amen? At kung nananahanan ng Panginoon sa atin, nasa atin ang banal na Espiritu, the Holy Spirit indwells the believer, and whenever we will have a contact with sin, the Holy Spirit will convict us. Are you with me? Hindi po tayo tinatakot ng Panginoon. Pero ang tunay na anak ng Diyos, siya po ay sensitive kapag ang kasalanan ay lumalapit sa Kanya o siya ay lumalapit sa kasalanan. Are you with me? Do you understand? Kaya hindi ka na dapat turuan, hindi ka na dapat sabihan. Ang tunay na anak ng Diyos lalayo sa kasalanan. Amen? O kung tayo yumayakap sa kasalanan, Kristiyano ba tayo? Ang isang tunay na Kristiyano, hindi yayakap sa kasalanan. Maaari po siyang mahulog sa kasalanan, pero alis yan sa kasalanan. Kaya nga po ang halintula dyan, yung pong baboy. Ang baboy po pagka sa putik, nag enjoy yan. Baboy siya eh. Pero ito pa, pag naputikan, yan po'y gugulong sa parang nang para sa ganoon, mahugasan yung putik sa kanya. At ganoon din po ang anak ng Diyos. Maaari mahulog ay sa kristyano sa kasalanan, pero hindi siya mananatili sa putik. Bakit? Meron tayong consciousness. Meron tayong Holy Spirit na nasa sa atin. Na yan ang maglalayo sa atin sa kasalanan. Yan ang tunay na kristyano. Maliwanag po ba? And so the church consists of souls in whom Christ has had personal advent, advent, and in whom He lives. This is another mystery, never to be explained by the unspiritual, never to be perfectly explained by the spiritual. The mystery of individual souls in whom Christ dwells lies at the back of the mystery of the church. Then presently He passes on, still possessing or following His argument until He comes to the yet deeper mystery And that is the mystery of God, which is Christ. Yun po yung malalim. Kaya nga po yung sinabi, si Kristo'y nasa sa inyo. Paano dumating si Kristo sa ating buhay? Did He force Himself to you? No. Tama po ba? Hindi po ipinilit sa inyo si Kristo. Tama ba? Nakinig kayo, nag-isip kayo, at nag-decide kayo na pag na tanggapin at pagtiwala si Kristo. Tama ba? At yun ay nangangahulugan nung iyon kinilala at tinanggap si Kristo. Ikaw ay nagsisinang lahat ng iyong mga kasalanan at handa kang tumalikod sa iyong mga kasalanan. Tama po ba? Amen? So the first great mystery of God is Christ Himself. The central mystery of Christianity is that of Christ formed in an individual soul. Kaya nga po nung tinanggap po si Kristo, si Kristo'y nasa sa atin. Nabuo sa atin. At siya'y na mama, siya'y na maninirahan at naninirahan sa ating buhay. Si Kristo ba'y naninirahan sa ating buhay? Come on! Is He really in you? 
Totoo ba na tinanggap mo si Kristo? Sapagat kapag totoong tinanggap mo si Kristo, yan ang maglalayo sa iyo sa kasalanan. At iibigin mong katwiran at kabanalan. Meron pong mga ibang nakikinig sa atin. Bakit sila ayaw pa rin tumanggap kay Kristo? You know why? Because they do not want to relinquish their sin. Tama ba? Nakayakap pa rin sila sa religion. Nakayakap pa rin sila saan? Doon sa kasalanan. Because if you will just unload all your sins, which make it, it heavy to you, alam mo nyo nagpapabigat? Yung kasalanan. Yung tradisyon. Yung iyong niyakap na hindi mo alam, pero hindi mo nakikita, ikaw ay nasa kaharian ng kadiliman at kasalanan. Subalit kapag ikay nagtiwala sa Panginoon, lahat ng mga bagay na yan, kaya mong iwanan. Bakit? Christ in you. Si Kristo ay nasa atin. Amen? Now, out of the great sweep of that argument, we take central words and turn to the things introducing and the things issuing that we may consider the central mystery of the Christian faith, which is thus expressed by the Apostle, Christ in you, the hope of glory. Without Christ, there's no glory. Walang kalwalatian. Walang buhay. The first and second advents of our Lord initiate and perfect this mystery of the realization of Christ in the individual life of the trusting soul. In His first advent, He came to atone. Kaya po ito. Ang ating tinanggap, yung pong maglilinis ng ating kasalanan. Yun lang ang alam natin. Si Kristo na mag-aalis ng kasalanan. Tama po ba? Dahil na-recognize mo, makasalanan ka eh. Separated ka sa Diyos. So yung unang-una pong portion ng ating pananampalataya, nagtiwala tayo na lahat ng ating kasalanan ay hugasan ng Panginoon. Amen? Ito ang tanong. Nahugasan na ka na ba sa lahat ng iyong kasalanan? Ipinahugas mo ba sa Panginoon ang lahat ng iyong kasalanan? Uminiyayakap ka pa. Ang tunay na pagsisisi po ay nangangahulugat. Lahat-lahat ay iyong iiwanan sa paanan ng Panginoon. Kaya po yung pag-forward dito sa harap, alam ba niyo ang ibig sabihin niyan? Isinusuko mo ang iyong isip, isinusuko mo ang iyong kalooban, isinusuko mo ang iyong buhay sa Panginoon. Yan pong purpose. It's not because somebody uh, siniko ka at, uy, forward ka. Hindi magiging totoo yun. Kung may pumilit sa'yo. Pero kung sa pakikinig ng salita ng Diyos, kaya nga po sabi, faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. Amen? Napakinggan mong katotohanan. At dahil doon sa katotohanan, mga kapatid, yun ang nag-move sa'yo. Yun ang nag-convict sa'yo. Kaya upon the conviction of the Holy Spirit, you come forward and you are willing to unload all your sin to God. And you are willing to accept the work of Christ on the cross when He died. Amen? At yun po. In His first advent, He came to atone to make possible His entrance. At the second advent, He will come to perfect His process of individual life. Kaya po yung nando doon ang Panginoon, nasa sa atin na ang purpose ng Panginoon para naman ipagpatuloy ang pagperfecto sa atin. <coughs> Kaya yung pong proseso na yun, yung po yung patuloy na pakikinig. Grow in grace. Sabi nga doon sa 1 Peter 2 verse 2, inyo pong tinan, as a newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word. Amen? Wala pong tunay na anak ng Diyos 
na hindi magnanasa na siya'y mag-aral ng salita ng Diyos. Bakit ayaw mo mag-attend ng church? Sige nga! Bakit ayaw mo pakinggan si pastor? Nasasaktan ka? Nakokonvict ka? Listen to this. It is good when God is teaching us. It is good when God is rebuking us from our sin. Tama po ba? Para yung pong kasalanan, inilalayo tayo. Inaalis tayo doon. Yan ang proseso. Yung po tinatawag na sanctification, oo, we are sanctified fully by God. By His, by His blood. But listen, as a child of God, may part tayo. Ano ang part natin? Oh, alisin mo na yung pagsisigarilyo mo. Oh, alisin mo na yung pagiinom mo. Oh, alisin mo na yung pambababae mo. Oh, alisin mo na yung mga kasalanan mo. Maliwanag po ba? Si pastor, dumating sa inyong bahay, nagiinom man kayo. Di ba nahihiya ka? Natatakot ka? Sino si pastor? Tao rin ako eh. Eh bakit ka takot? Dahil alam mo, ang ginagawa mo, mali. Tama? Kaya po yung Christ in you is so significant. At this point, the apostle uses the title rather than the name of the Lord. This indicates the inclusion of the person and his work. Kaya po nung tinanggap natin si Kristo, hindi lamang si Kristo ang tinanggap natin, ang tinanggap din natin ay yung natapos na ginawa ng Panginoon doon sa Cruz. Are you with me now? Do you understand? Because Christ being the priest, He offered Himself. He became the very offering. He died for our sin. And that was the work of a priest. He did it for you. And you accepted it. Not just Christ, but the finished work of Christ. Amen? Kaya yun, nandun doon po. There is no one perfectly sure of Jesus Christ in history unless He's sure of Him in experience. Kaya, naranasan mo na ba talaga na tinanggap si Kristo? Huh? At one point, in time, you really accepted Christ. That's why I can, I can never, I can never forget the day that I got saved. October 26, 1966, I attended a Bible study in front of FEU, Baptist Student Union. Center po yan para sa mga estudyante. And as I was listening to the preacher, And I can never forget his message. Kaya po yung tunay na naligtas, yung experience na yun, sasariwa in ng Diyos lagi sa'yo. Kailang ka naligtas? Ano ang Bible text na nagbigay ng panggising sa'yo? Tama ba? Amen? Maalala mo yung conviction ng Holy Spirit. Naalala mo yung time na you were trying to refuse, you were trying to hold on and say, hindi ako magpo-forward. Kasi alam mo, hinihila ka na ng Panginoon. You know, the Spirit is convicting you and convincing you. Pero at the end, yung Panginoon pa rin at ang kanyang Spirit ang nanaig sa atin. Amen. Lumapit ako sa harapan. Because right there and then, while I was listening, I opened my heart to, to the Lord Jesus Christ. And I said, Lord, kung ako'y mamamatay ngayon, I know I'm going to hell. I know I'm doomed. But thank you for the opportunity you have given me to accept you and receive you as my Lord and my Savior. Kaya ako po ito manggap. Nando doon pa ako sa aking upuan. Bakit ako nag-forward? I come forward not to be saved. I come forward so that I can testify that I have accepted Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. 
Ano ibig sabihin nun? Is it hard for a person to obey and follow Christ in baptism? No! Bakit? Sapagat kung alam mong ligtas ka, baptism is just a step of obedience. Kaya kung ikaw ay tunay na anak ng Diyos, hindi ka pa nagpapabaptize, then, please, obey the Lord. Sundin mo lang ang Panginoon. Amen? I know Christ because Christ is in me. Alam ko si Kristo ay nasa akin ng buhay. Is He in you today? Are you sure that Christ is in you today? Kung hindi pa, settle it now. Amen? Settle it now. That's why the apostles say, it is a mystery. The presence of Christ in one individual life himself, in all the marvelous glory of his person, as very God and very man. Ngayon po tinanggap ko, Diyos na nagkatawan tao. Humanly, or human sympathy, human love, human purity, human power, all surcharged with those infinite resources of God, which made him as a man, perfect, victor, are present in all in whom he is formed, eventually and through processes to make them equally victorious with himself. It is a mystery, but if it be a mystery that cannot be explained to the scientific age, it is a fact known in the lives of countless multitudes. Ang nakakaalam po lang niyan, yung taong tumanggap sa Panginoon. How do you know that you are saved? How do you know? You yourself know. Because the Holy Spirit, when you receive Christ, you know, becomes the earnest of our salvation. Yung pinakang naging sanla ng Diyos, yung patunay ng Diyos, na ikaw ay anak ng Diyos, may Holy Spirit ka sa buhay mo. Amen? Tama ba? Kaya sabi nga po sa verse 14, In whom we have redemption through His blood, even the forgiveness of sin. Kaya tiyak mo. Dahil iningi mo ng tawad yung lahat ng iyong kasalanan, alam mo, nung araw na yon, nung oras na yon, nung tinanggap mo, nandi dyan si Kristo. Dahil hinugasan niya lahat ang iyong mga pagkakasala. Noong una, daman-dam ako po, pa, nung nakikinig pa ako, yung burden ng kasalanan ko. Pero ako'y nagtiwala sa Panginoon na wala yung burden, yung daladala kong pasan na kasalanan. Nawala lahat yan. Ganun na kapayapaan na ibinigay ng Panginoon. Amen? Kaya po pag tunay kang naligtas, naalis yung agam-agam, naalis yung pag-alala, na ikaw pa rin ang nagdadala ng kasalanan. No more! I am no more bearing my sin. It is now Christ who bore my sin. Amen? Ngayon si Kristo na. Maliwanag na. Christ in me. And I need hardly apologize for testimony at this point for speaking rather as a witness than an advocate. Christ in me is the most certain thing in my personal experience. Kaya wala po makakapagpasubali ng iyong naranasan. Si Kristo na sa akin ang buhay. Tama ba? Amen? Ikaw yung nakakaalam eh. Kaya gayon din, ngayong umaga, si Kristo ba ay nasa inang buhay? Si Kristo ba ay nasa inang puso? Si Kristo ba ay nakapaglinis na ng lahat ng iyong mga kasalanan? He came by the act of the Holy Spirit when I fulfilled the conditions of the Word. Anong condition ng, ng salita ng Diyos? John 3.16, very simple. God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth on Him, simply po yun eh, whosoever believeth on Him, should not what? Perish, but have what? 
everlasting life. But as many as received him, John 1.12, to them gave them the power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. Ano napapanghawakan mo? Nung tinanggap mo si Kristo, ikaw ay binigyan ng kapamalaan at kapangyarihan na maging isang anak ng Diyos. Maliwanag po ba? Amen? Yun ang dahilan. Kaya tiyak ko at tiyak mo at tiyak ng mga naratong mana ng palataya. At kung ikaw ay hindi pa tiyak, ngayong umaga, tanggapin mo ang pangako ng kaligtasan sa iyo. Sa simpleng pananampalataya. Kaya nga po isang tao, pag iyong kinausap, alam mo ba na mahal ka ng Diyos? Ano, na, ano nagtulak sa'yo na sabihin mo, mahal ka ng Diyos? Yung pag-ibig ni Kristo. Amen? At yung isang tao na hindi nakakaranas ng pagmamahal, sasabihin niya, totoo ba? Ako'y magtitiwala kay Kristo. Mahal pala ako ni Kristo. At yung po yung, kaya nga po kumisan, Muslim, Hindus, Confucius, mga Chinese, mga Hapon. Simpleng-simple lamang ang witnessing. Mahal ka ng Panginoon na matay siya para sa iyo. Gusto bang tanggapin siya para maligtas ka? At simple pong sasabihin na isang totoo nagsisis, oo, gusto kong tanggapin si Kristo. And presto, salvation happens on that very moment. Amen? Yun po ang mystery ng salvation. Amen? Pero tingnan po ninyo, ang dami po, nakapakig na, paulit-ulit, nakikinig dito sa atin. Hanggang ngayon, hindi pa rin say. Bakit? Yung mystery ng pananampalataya. Binubuksan na sa kanyang sarili, ayaw pang tanggapin. At kung ganyan, eto po, mag-ingat kayo. Me warning. Alam niyo ang pinakadakilang kasalanan na magagawa ng isang tao. You keep on, you keep on, sabi nga po, sinasaktan niyo ang Holy Spirit because when the Holy Spirit is talking to you, you better listen to the Spirit of God. Because time will come, the Holy Spirit will no longer speak to you. Yung po yung unpardonable sin. Yung Holy Spirit, maaring may sinabi ka, nararamdaman mo yan, at tinanggihan mo, you judge yourself. You'll never be saved. When the Holy Spirit stop convicting a person, that will be the time you are doomed forever. At sana huwag mangyari at sa'yo. Lalo na ikaw, naririto, at nakikinig ka. Magpakumbaba ka sa Panginoon. Yun lang naman ang parani. Tama po ba? Amen? Pagsisihan mo yung pagtanggi mo. Pagsisihan mo yung pagmamatigas ng iyong puso. Matanggap mo si Kristo. Ngayong umaga, magkakaroon ka ng kalayaan <coughs> magkakaroon ka ng kaligtasan. Christ in you, the hope of glory. Christ in you, that is the great miracle, the great mystery, the individual fact on which all the other facts of Christianity are based, and through which the other forces of Christianity become operative in the history of man. Christ in me, Christ the light, so that I see with his eyes. Christ in me, the Christ aspiration, so that I desire his own desire. Kaya nga po, pagkikianak na ng Diyos, yung gusto ng Diyos kagaya niyan, mag-soul winning tayo. Desire ng Diyos na nagsusuporta tayo ng church. Amen? Desire ng Diyos na ibigin natin ang ating kapwa. 
Ibigin e natin ang ibang tao upang makapakinig at upang tumanggap ng katotohanan ng kaligtasan. Christ in me, the Christ impulse, so that I am driven as He was driven. Kaya po, si Kristo bilang liwanag ang magtuturo sa atin upang makita natin ang katotohanan. At ito ang magdadrive sa iyo para pag-aralan mong mabuti ang salita ng Diyos. Itong Panginoon ang magbibigay sa inyo rin ng tulak. Yun po yung kan, ano? The motivation to be faithful to God. Hindi ka napipilitin. Yun po isang taong gutom. Hindi po pipilitin na tawagin sa mesa. Di ba? Eh, gutom siya eh. Hindi ka pa nga natawag, nandiyan dyan na sa mesa eh. Gutom na ako! At ganun din. Yung pagdalo, hindi ka pipilitin dumalo. Ang tunay na anak ng Diyos, may pagkagutom at pagkauhaw sa katotohanan. Amen? Opo. Kaya, Christ in me, the Christ consciousness. Naging conscious ka ng mga bagay na espiritual. Naging conscious ka so that the world's sin burdens me in the same passion as it burdened him. Kung ito po ay nakakapagpabigat sa Panginoon, alam mo sa iyong buhay, dapat alisin mo yung kasalanan na yun. And the world's agony hurts me as the world's agony hurts him. What is a Christian man? A Christocentric man is a man in whom Christ is enthroned at the center of his life. Amen? Si Kristo na nakaluklok sa ating buhay. Siya ba'y nakaluklok sa iyong buhay? Siya ba namamahala ng iyong buhay? Na iyong pinapailalim, yung iyong kaisipan, yung iyong kalooban, yung iyong damdamin. Yes. Christ enthroned at the center of personality. Not as a sentiment, but as a person. Not as an ideal without, but as dynamic at work within. Kaya kung si Kristo'y namamahala, susundin mo ang Panginoon. Amen? Alam po ba ninyo, nakakalungkot po, bilang isang pastor, I've been here and you know, for more than almost 50 years na po. At alam po ninyo na taon-taon, pagka po January, laging china-challenge ko kayo sa giving. Until now, some of you have not obeyed. Many of us have not filled our own envelopes. Many of us knows that we should be giving our tithes, our offerings for missions, our first fruits offering, and yet you refuse. Adamantly. You're saying, hindi ka lang nagsasalita kay pastor. Pero sinasabi mo, hindi ako naniniwala dyan, pastor. Yun ang dahilan, kaya ako hindi nagpipil up. Hindi ako naniniwala sa turo mo, mga kapatid. Hindi po akin ito eh. Sa Diyos po ito eh. Yung salita ng Panginoon, di ba? Amen? Pastor po, tagaturo lang. Pero ngayong umbaga, kung naunawa mo na si Kristo ay nasa iyo, dapat yung Kristo na yan sinusunod natin. Amen? Hear me. For I speak with great reverence and yet with all boldness that Christ is richer for having you. Alam ba niyo nung tinanggap mo si Kristo? 
naging mahalaga ka at naging mas mayaman siya. For what? That is the individual application of the magnificent argument of the Ephesian epistle in which Paul tells us plainly that God gains an inheritance in the saints. Nung pinagtiwalaan natin ang Panginoon, alam nyo kung nung nag-gain ng ating Panginoon? But what does Christ gain in you or in us? Number one, He gains an instrument. Kung tayo pagagamit sa Panginoon, He gains an instrument. Imagine, you have your talent, you have your, uh, sabihin natin po yung inyong mga kakayahan. Pero ang tanong, napapagamit ba tayo? Are you with me now? Ikaw, writer ka, ano nagawa mo para sa Panginoon na ikay sumulat para luwalatiin ng Panginoon? Ikaw, architect ka, ano na itulong mo bilang architect para sa Panginoon? Ikaw, engineer, ano nagawa mo bilang engineer para sa Panginoon? Ikaw, teacher, nagtuturo ka pero ikaw ba'y nagturo na salita ng Diyos? There's a lot of things that you can do for the Lord. If you allow yourselves to be an instrument. Amen? His light upon some other dark soul. Kaya nga po, meron pong tao na nasa kadiliman. Ikaw lamang yung kalapit. Ikaw lang yung maaari magsabi. Meron kang lolo, o meron kang uncle, o meron kang pinsan, na ikaw lamang ang maaari makakabot dahil naniniwala sa'yo, may tiwala sa'yo, nakita ang iyong tinatawag na in a flash, nakita niya ang iyong buhay, na binago. Sana magpatuloy ka na maging instrumento para yung tao na yan ay makakilala sa ating Panginoon. He gain an instrument. He gain He gains a medium through which he is able to touch with healing other wounded spirits. Ano ibig sabihin nito? Kung minsan po, di ba, we can relate through the experience of others. Kung meron pong malilis dito, kababaihan, nakaranas po ng mga hindi nyo makalimutang karanasan, sa magitan po ng inyong mga hurts, sa magitan po ng inyong mga experiences, you can relate to others. Simple lang po. Just testify to the people around what God has done for you. Kagaya po ni Sister Levi, siya po yung police officer. Nakapagsalita po siya sa radyo. Pero nakita niyo, tingnan niyo kanyang buhay. Nakita niyo ang kahalaga ng pagsunod ng babae. Kahit meron trabaho, nakita niyo yung kanyang anak na papabayaan. Na kailangan mag-minister tayo sa ating sarili mga anak. Na kumisan po, hindi natin nare-realize yung trabaho natin ang nagpapalayo sa atin, sa ating mga anak. At ang ating mga anak gumagawa ng hindi dapat sapagat ang ating, hindi natin man lang nabibigyan ng pagkakataon na kausapin, mag-minister. Oo, hindi lahat po nabibili ng pera eh. Tama? You may give good money. O kung kayo po'y nasa bahay, anong ministeryo na gagawa mo sa iyong anak? Tumingin kayo sa akin, mga nanay. Nasa bahay ka na nga. Anong ginagawa mo? Ayun, busy-busy ka lang panunood ng telenovela. Korean telenovela. Busy-busy ka saan? Yung iba, masama pa nga eh. Nagtutungit. Hindi man nakakahiya. Yung may trabaho ng kristyano, magtungit. Nagsusugal, nagbibinggo. Nagiinom. Trabaho ba yan, kristyano? Hindi po yung trabaho ng kristyano. Tama? So, He made us as His medium 
He made us as His instrument. And He gains us as a channel through which He is able to move out to other wounded hearts. He gains whatever He comes to possess. Yung po ang gusto ng Panginoon. He has possessed us. Tayo pagmamayari na ng Diyos. Tama po ba? At bilang pag-aari ng Diyos, nagagamit ba tayo ng Panginoon? But if I am to be the means, the medium of manifestation, what do I gain? Kung si Kristo meron na gain, ano ang nagain naman natin? I gain all His resources. Kaya po, bibigyan ng wisdom tayo ng Panginoon as you talk to people and as you relate your life. For I have fellowship with Him. Yung pong kadahilanan kung bakit dapat araw-araw ating dinidiligan ng ating isip, ang ating puso ng salita ng Diyos. Amen. It's not just coming to church. But every day we let us diligan po natin yung ating isip, yung ating puso ng katotohanan. Nakakalungkot po may mga Kristiyano, Biblia na hindi nababasa sa tahanan. Namimigay po tayo ng daily bread, by the way. Sino po ang wala pang daily bread hanggang ngayon? Namigay na po. Tasa ang kamay. Wala pa kayong daily bread. O, ayan. Ah, ah, pakitingnan yung mga workers. Sino? Tasa ang kamay. Para kayo po ibibigyan. Pumunta ka sa opisina money. Lahat ng walang daily bread. Bigyan sila. Um, anong purpose ng daily bread? Ibinibigay po ang daily bread upang araw-araw sinasariwa natin ang mga pangako ng Panginoon. Kaya tinawag na daily bread pang araw-araw na pagkain ng ating kaluluwa. Para wag tayong magutom at wag tayong maging kristyanong gutom. I gain all His resources, for I have fellowship with Him and in all the larger purpose of His life. Now, let us turn to the experience resulting, the hope of glory. Christ in you, the hope of glory. The word glory means it refers to the great consummation in which God's purposes are to be per- perfectly fulfilled. In which Christ, seeing that travail of his soul, is to be satisfied, in which the church, with one voice of perfect song, will say, Thou, O Christ, art all I want. Sinasabi ba natin sa ating boy araw-araw, Lord, you feel my life. You feel my empty heart. You feel my desire. Kaya sabi nga po ng Bible, in which the whole creation, which is still waiting, in its groaning for the manifestation of the sons of God, will find its groaning cease and join the chorus of praise to purpose of His love in all that His hands have made. Christ in you is the hope of this glory. And what is hope? I open with we bore in mind more carefully the real significance of the word hope. Ano ba yung pag-asa? Hope does not mean foundationless. Ang pag-asa po ay hindi walang tinatawag na pundasyon. But rather confidence. Kaya tayo man ng palatay, bakit tayo may confidence? Di ba? Philippians 1, verse 6. Maganda po yun. Ano sabi dyan? Being confident of this very thing, that He which hath begun a good work in us will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. Magaganap po natin eh. 
May confidence kang kaya mong gawain. May confidence ka sa buhay mo. Ano yung mga hindi mo kaya, makakaya natin. Amen! Sa tulong ng Panginoon. Sa habag ng Panginoon. Amen! Yes. He is always energizing the effort of the present. Is there anything we need more than today to hear the anthem of the indwelling Christ telling us of the victory that is yet to be? Yan po yung katagumpayan. Alam mo niyo kung sino man ang nagumpay? It's the Christian. It's the believer. Buksan niyo yung ating Biblia sa Romans chapter 8. Please. Romans chapter 8. Nakita na ninyo? Ha? Huh? Romans 8, verse 35. Nasabi dito, Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword? As it is written, For thy sake we are killed all the day long. We are accounted as a sheep for the slaughter. Now, you know, all these things, we are more than what? More than what? Conquerors through Him that loved us. Brother, we are more than conquerors. Ano man yung ating sinusuong, ano man ang ating kaaway, may kakayahan tayong gapiin. Kaya po yung ating sariling mga masamang isip, yung pong ating masamang desire, yung pong jablo na sa atin ay nagdidikta, kaya natin yan. Dahil nasa atin ang Panginoon. Christ in you, the hope of glory. Amen? If Jesus Christ had not come into the world, all these songs would have ceased long ago. Kaya po nung naalala niyo mga angel, maawit sila, pinuntahan nila yung mga shepherds. ano sa na? Be of good cheer. Christ is in you. Christ is born in Bethlehem. Meaning to say, for almost 6,000 years, or 5,000 years, they were waiting for the Savior. And the Savior came. The Savior was finally revealed. Wow. So in the city of David, you'll find in a manger, the child. The hope. Kaya po ang na kay Kristo, may pag-asa. Amen? Kaya pong iba na, alam niyo mga nainip? Ito ang tanong. Where is the promise of His coming? Is Jesus Christ coming back? Bakit po nagtatanong ng ganito? Nawawalan ito ng pag-asa. Di ba pagka po sa dami ng problema natin, sa, lumu- sa limuot na problema, sana bumalik ng Panginoon. Kasi alam natin eh, pag ang Panginoon ay bumalik na, sa langit na tayo. Pero tandaan ninyo, bakit si Pablo po doon sa ating pinag-aralan? Doon sa Pilipian, sabi niya, I am bitwigs. Nahati ako sa isa. Pero ang decision niya, yung purpose sa buhay natin, for to be, to live is Christ, and to die is gain. Dapat mabuhay pa tayo para makatulong tayo sa kaharian ng Diyos. Para makatulong tayo sa pag-aakay ng kanaluwa. Tama ba? Ang mga anak natin, maliliit pa. Ang mga anak natin, nakita ba nyo, lumalago ba sila sa Panginoon? Nagagamit ba ng Panginoon? O hanggang ngayon, ang mga anak mo, nasa bahay nga, pero mga pasaway, mga problema, mga kapatid, mayroong pag-asa si Kristo na nasa atin. 
Maaari kaya ganun ang ating mga anak, ang iba sa kanila, hindi totoo ang kaligtasan. Hindi totoo na ligtas. Hanggang ang mga anak natin ay pasaway. Baka hindi totoo nakaranas ng kapanganak ang mag-uli. No Christian man has ever waited that out, but that presently there came singing back to resolve the answer of Christ. Nandiyan si Kristo. Christ in you, the hope of glory, means a great deal more than comparison. Not merely in the sense of expectation, but in the sense of endeavor. Christ energizes the present. Kaya pinalalakas tayo ngayon. Yun po yung prayer ko lagi. I am praying that God will strengthen our church. I am praying that our congregation, Blue Ridge Bible Baptist Church, will have concern for missions. We'll give more so that we can support more missionaries and more endeavor for missions. Kaya nga po, He will clothe my poor word with the power of God. Yun pong prayer ko as I preach. Sana po itong salita na aking dinala ngayong umaga ay may kapangyariang magbago sa mga mananampalatea na ng lulupaypay at nangihina. Magpakatatag tayo at magpakalakas sa Panginoon. The Christian man is the man in whom Christ dwells and who therefore has Christ's vision. Christ was the man who said to his own generation, ye are an evil generation. So if the great untold mystery of God in Christ has become the personal mystery of Christ in me, then what? Let us begin to sing that joy. Christ is my hope. And today, what is the ultimate thing? It is that he who came to destroy the works of the devil will destroy them in me. Kaya yung pong Panginoon, hayaan natin yung mga masamang pagnanasa natin, masamang kaisipan natin, masamang iniisip natin, hayaan natin na sirain ng Panginoon. At magtiwala tayo. Christ in us. The hope of glory. Manalangin po tayo. Let's all stand. Thank you po sa inyong pakikinig. Na over time na naman ako. Next Sunday, hindi na pwede. By 11, we will be over. We'll have our Sunday school. Heavenly Father, we submit unto you this message. And Lord, you know how your Spirit have spoken to your people. And today, their Father, if you have spoken unto them and convicted your people, then bring your people into the altar today. Help us not only to realize, but cherish the truth about the teaching, about the doctrine, Christ in me, the hope of glory. Christ in us, the hope of glory. Christ in you, the hope of glory. Bring your people to the altar, Father. Help them to make a commitment that they will be true and serve you. In Jesus' name, Amen. Kung kayo po'y kinausap ng Panginoon, come to the altar now.
Would you want God to have His own way in your life? Then come. You know yourself. You need to be in the altar. Come now. Sige po. Come. Amen. Meron pa po ba? Nangusap ang Panginoon sa inyo. Slip out from your seat and come to the altar now. Kung meron pong hindi tiyak ang kaligtasan, the Lord has spoken to you and you need to be saved. Come to the altar now. Be saved today. Meron po ba? God spoke to you about your salvation. Come now and be saved. Meron po? Anyone? Maraming salamat po. You may be seated. Sa atin po mga members na hindi pa nakapagbigay ng kalang tithes, ng kalang offerings, maybe you need to go there at the back, get your offering envelope. Magbigay po tayo. At kay binibigyan po ng pagkakataon. For those who are already ready to give, then you may stand and come and give your offering. Are you happy today? Salamat po sa salita ng Diyos. Tumayo na po tayo. We'll be dismissed. Tawagin ko si Pastor John D. Pastor John, please come and dismiss us in a word of prayer. Manalangin po tayo. Takilang Diyos, salamat Panginoon sa ipong takilang salita na aming napakinggan. Truly, Father Lord, na ito yung buhay po namin, ito yung kalakasan po namin, ito yung gabay po namin, Panginoon. And I pass, Father Lord, nung ayang puso namin, ay lumayo po sa inyo, Panginoon, kundi pa'y matuto kami sumunod sa inyo, God. Salamat, Panginoon, na aming napakinggan. I-apply po na sa iyong buhay, Panginoon, and thank you po sa iyong pumalang Pastor Lord sa kanyang pagutro sa amin, sa iyong pagmamahal po sa iyong Panginoon. And help us, Father Lord, na mahalin po namin yung Church of God, mahalin namin kayo, Panginoon, paglingkuran namin kayo. Father, dismiss with your love, O God, at ibalik yung maming hapon, Panginoon, sa iyong afternoon service. All the praise and glory, Father, binabalik namin sa inyo. In Jesus' name we pray. 
Amen.